Today we're going to be doing a durability test on Microsoft's newest phone, the Surface Duo 2, that costs $1,500. It's got two screens though, which means our durability test will be twice as fun. This video is sponsored by Stamps.com. Personally, I use Stamps.com on a very regular basis. I ship out my Jerry Rig Everything knives, and I will be shipping out this limited edition Art Class with Jerry t-shirt. Links are down in the description. Why use stamps.com, do you ask? Well, it's because I never have to leave my house. Time is money, and with stamps.com, I have all the access I need to UPS and USPS. I can compare rates and print labels right from my own computer. If you spend more than a few minutes a week dealing with mail and shipping, Stamps.com is a real time saver. Join the one million other businesses using Stamps.com and save time and money this holiday season. Head to Stamps.com slash JerryRig for a special four-week trial, free postage, and a free five-pound digital scale. No long-term commitment or contracts. It's super easy. Stamps.com slash JerryRig, and I will literally be using it right after we finish this durability test. Speaking of which, let's get started. In front of us today, we have the Microsoft Surface Duo 2. Last year's Duo 1 was concerningly flexible in some weird places, but did ultimately survive my durability test. So this should be interesting. Inside the box we see that there is no charging brick, just a USB-C cable. Lack of a brick is fine with me, I have about 700 sitting in a drawer. I'm not sure what the rest of y'all are doing though. Apparently the Duo 2 is all about multitasking, kind of like having two displays on your desktop. The biggest difference between this year's Duo and last year's Duo is that Microsoft has actually added cameras this time around. And that camera bump is slightly angled, so the phone can still flip all the way around and kind of close together. Kind of. Seems a little out of place, not gonna lie, but not a deal breaker. Having cameras is more important than it folding flat, but it's kind of a bummer we have to compromise. The hinge holds its place at any point during the opening process, and can be propped up like a laptop, so you can set it on a table and watch YouTube videos on the upright screen. It's also got magnets on the back, which can be used to mount Microsoft Stylus to the phone. And once again, I am a fan of this design, with some caveats though, but I'll get to those in a second. First, let's scratch the screens. Normally with folding phones like the Samsung Z Flip and the Z Fold, the folding screen is made from a super soft plastic. We can see what material the screen is made from on this Duo 2 by using the Mohs scale of hardness. A level two or three would be plastic, a level 5 or 6 would be glass, and a level 8 or 9 would be sapphire. Luckily, we start seeing scratches at a level 6 with deeper grooves at a level 7, and scratches at a level 6 with deeper grooves at a level 7, which does make this the most scratch-resistant folding phone we've tested so far this year. No plastic screens here. Now this does mean there is a substantial gap and bezel between the two halves, just like you would expect on dual desktop displays, the front-facing camera is protected by that same Gorilla Glass Victus. The sides of this $700 smartphone in six months are made from plastic, like we see around the USB-C port and the plastic SIM card tray. Microsoft actually tweeted that their phone is IPX1, which means it's water-resistant to singular droplets of vertically falling water, like the tears of Duo owners after seeing the price drop. You should still grab a tissue though, because the IP rating system only counts in fresh water and not salt water. And this entire frame and buttons are made from plastic. Minus the hinge. The hinge is made from metal. One cool little gimmick though, if we plug in my anchor power bank, we can see that the charging indicator notifies us through the curved glass on the spine of the phone. This also works for notifications, and if you have a magnifying glass, you can even see a little clock. Samsung, of course, solved the notification issue by adding a whole front display, which would have been useful here on the Duo 2, instead of just peeking through the hinge. If you have to pick up and kink your phone to the side to see notifications, 
you might as well just open it. One substantial improvement over last year's Duo though is that this time around, instead of only having one internal selfie camera to work with, we finally have some real cameras on the back. A 12 megapixel normal camera, 12 megapixel telephoto, and a 16 megapixel ultra wide, all protected under that same angled glass camera bump. I'm a fan of this improvement. However, I don't deal much with software during my reviews, but having watched other reviews on YouTube, I understand that this Duo 2 is still just as finicky as the Duo 1, which is unfortunate. With its dual 5.8 inch, 90 hertz displays, Microsoft could really come out swinging if they ditched Android. And hear me out. Microsoft should own what they own, drop Android, and plop a full-fledged Windows operating system on here. The Surface Pro tablets running full Windows are pretty amazing. Luckily, we have two screens to burn, so I can keep on talking. Microsoft could crush the mobile productivity space in ways that no one else can. But here they are, trying to adapt a super creative phone to an Android operating system that prefers pouring rectangles. The Surface Duo 2 is just begging to be a full-fledged PC in my pocket, but it's being held back by Android. Can you imagine pulling a full Windows 11 PC out of your pants? It already does 4K video over USB-C, so I could connect to external monitors while traveling. Add a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard. I'm getting excited just thinking about it. I'd never bring my laptop anywhere ever again, which is actually probably the very reason why Microsoft doesn't do it. The dual AMOLED screens both lasted an incredibly long time under my lighter though, without leaving much of a mark at all. Finally, we do have a side-mounted fingerprint reader, which normally I do prefer, but since this one is made from plastic, and I already scratched it, it's having a hard time performing. I think we can let it slide though, it's kinda had a hard day. Now it's time to see how structurally solid this multitasking glass and plastic sandwich really is. Yeah, I can fold it 360 degrees, minus a few for that camera bump, but one annoying thing is that the phone does have to be opened each time you get a phone call, and closed again after the call is over. Luckily, even when slammed shut with an exorbitant amount of force, the glass is not cracked. Slamming it shut backwards also has no effect on the phone. Nice work so far, Microsoft. Now the bend test. When bent from whatever side this is, we don't see any flex from the hinge, but we do see some massive flex from the other end of the phone. I'm gonna say the true winner here is the Gorilla Glass Victus bending and flexing to the extreme on all sides without shattering. It's the only thing holding this phone together. Cause it sure is an Android. Well, the Microsoft Surface Duo 2 has survived my durability test. I'm curious though, would you swap your Android phone for a dual screen full fledged pocket computer? Do you think Android is holding the Duo series back from something epic? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Coming out with me on Instagram and Twitter. And thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around.